When I was looking into purchasing a medium format camera, there was a whole cloud of mystery behind the format and the cameras that shoot it. From aspect ratios to various sizes and varying prices, plunging into medium format can be quite intimidating and definitely confusing on where to actually begin. That being said, jumping into medium format has made me grow the most as a photographer than anything else. Today I'm going to walk you through in a guide type format, figuring out where to start with finding a medium format film camera for you. First, I think one of the most important determining factors when looking into medium format is aspect ratio and as a result, the size of the negative and how many negatives per roll. For the video, I'll be going through each aspect ratio, pros and cons of them, the different styles of cameras, and then my suggested cameras for each category at the end. So let's start with 645. With 645, you get 16 images per roll and it is the smallest resolution medium format camera available. Meaning you will notice the least amount of resolution upgrade when jumping from a full frame camera. That's not to say that this is the least desirable though. These cameras, I think, tend to be the best diving point for beginner photographers wanting to get their feet wet. They're the most forgiving with their 16 frames and tend to be on the smaller side of medium format cameras. Next up is 6x6 or square format. Probably the most historically relevant aspect ratio when it comes to medium format and one that I've sadly never really experienced much of. Among its legendary lineup of cameras, square format boasts thousands of historical photos and time is a testament to how great this aspect ratio is. With the resolution and size being larger than that of 645, you can only squeeze 12 photos out of a 120 roll, which is obviously less economical. That being said, the difference between 35mm and 6x6 is substantially more noticeable than 645. Lastly, something else worth noting in my opinion, some of my friends and people I see online kind of shit on 6x6 for being so simple or framing needing to be symmetrical, but I think this aspect ratio, when used by an expert, is the most masterful and can be the most interesting and dynamic photos of all aspect ratios. Next, probably my favorite aspect ratio to shoot ever, at least at this point in time, 6x7. 6x7 hosts probably pound for pound the most legendary lineup of medium format cameras versus any of the other aspect ratios. From traveling friendly Mumias, the Mumia 7 being my most favorite camera of all time, to the legendary Pentax 67 and many different modular cameras, 6x7 really seems to have a camera for everyone. That being said, because it is 6x7, you only get 10 negatives per roll of film, this, in my opinion, is both a pro and a con. Because the negatives are so large, the resolution is obviously very large as well, but only getting 10 negatives per roll of film gets pretty expensive pretty quick. Jumping from 35mm to 6x7 is really so noticeable in detail and grain structure. Because of this, it is very important to understand which shots are worthwhile on 6x7, much more than, say, 645, as each cost is substantially more. So the name of the game when deciding between these is looking at the difference in resolution and number of images and figuring out where on the spectrum between less but large photos or more but smaller photos you fit in between. With that in mind, there are some additional less popular aspect ratios with significantly less cameras available that do go larger than 6x7. There are both 6x8 and 6x9 formats, however the camera selection is quite limited and much more dated than many of the other formats. For 6x8, the only ones I can think of are Fuji, so these are quite niche in my opinion. As for 6x9, the resolution is pretty insane here, and the aspect ratio mirrors that of a 35mm negative, which is why it is so appealing to many photographers. While you only get 8 frames in these, the unique aspect ratio and resolution makes up for the expensive negatives in medium format. While you only get 8 frames in these, the unique aspect ratio on medium format and resolution makes up for the expensive negatives. So now that we understand the size of negatives and the amount of photos in said cameras, we should talk about the different style of cameras that will affect the workflow while shooting. First, let's talk about SLR medium format cameras. These tend to be the most popular due to their customizability and familiarity with 35mm cameras. While many of these SLRs look box-like in shape, they operate very similarly to say a Canon AE-1 or easier 35mm SLR. The nice thing about these is that you can change the way you want to shoot it to be customized to your liking. Want a waist level viewfinder? No problem. Want to switch the manual advance lever for an automatic one? Go ahead. Want to find a super niche wide angle lens to shoot? find it. In fact, there's tons of lenses for these SLR cameras. Compared to cameras we'll talk about later on, these are definitely the kings when it comes to building your own rig to how you want it. Additionally, I think the medium format SLRs have the greatest variety of cameras ranging in price and build, 
which is nice for both beginners and experts alike. For what it's worth, this was my first handful of medium format cameras, and I really, really enjoy them, especially for beginning and learning on. As for my recommendations, my favorite 645 and one to recommend would be the Mamiya 645. It was my first medium format camera and was a great beginner camera to learn how medium format SLRs work and was forgiving with the amount of images to where I could learn much easier for cheaper versus having to pay more money for less photos and ultimately learn slower, in my opinion. I think the limitations of film in this digital era almost always make photographers grow, but it is necessary to be able to afford to get your photos back in a timely manner to learn the process. The Mami again is extremely customizable to whatever you want to do. It can be an incredible tripod landscape camera, an intimate portrait camera, a running gun lifestyle camera, and everything in between. They're also relatively affordable cameras as well, which is the icing on the cake. For 6x6, I would suggest the Kiev 60 as a really great budget camera or a Bronica SQ. The Kiev is a Russian camera that as long as you find one in good condition, I think are quite underrated in the 6x6 lineup. My roommate has one that he has nothing but good things to say about. Additionally, the Bronica SQ comes in at a higher price point, but the quality and feeling of this camera is definitely hands above that of the Kiev. Again, being so modular, it allows you to create the experience you want out of that camera. As for 6x7, the best bang for your buck is by and large the RB67. Again, with being an SLR, it's extremely modular. Despite being pretty huge, the camera is an ideal portrait camera in my opinion, and again, could easily be used to take epic landscapes. The price on these are at a really sweet spot right now, so take that with a grain of salt when looking at them, but I think it's a great time to look into them. Second, let's talk about TLR cameras or twin lens reflex cameras. They have two fixed lenses, one for viewing and one for taking the photo. Most of these cameras are pretty similar. They have a focusing dial on one side, the advanced dial on the other, and a waist level viewfinder on the top. They are generally extremely compact and definitely lean into the vintage look of medium format cameras. There are some cameras that allow you to swap out lenses, but generally they are not very customizable, especially in comparison to SLRs. As for suggestions, I would say the Minolta Autocord seems to be the best camera for the price point, but the Yashica Mat 124 is also noteworthy too. Because I really haven't used either, I sadly don't have much for frame of reference for either of these ones. Third, range finders. These are similar to SLR cameras, but what you see when you look through the viewfinder is not actually what the lens is seeing. This seems kind of counterintuitive, but the slight variation is so minimal that it doesn't make that big of a difference when composing, but can definitely be a little tricky your first couple times. The nice thing about range finders is their size and quickness when it comes to shooting. Because of this, I tend to think these make the best travel cameras for medium format as they just allow you to quickly snap shots and easily carry them anywhere on a hike, backstage, in the streets, etc. For a beginner range finder, I would suggest the Bronica RF645. Bronica is a really underrated company that has tons of great cameras and really nice sharp lenses. This camera comes in at a nice price point while being newer and much more reliable than many older folding cameras that might be more enticing than the newer, more expensive counterparts. As for my camera, I have a Mamiya 7 and is the greatest camera I've ever used for what I need it for, lifestyle and travel photography. As for purchasing these medium format cameras, in my opinion there are three ways that are best for purchasing, so let's go through my most familiar way first, eBay. When you look on eBay, you'll find that the majority of film cameras come from Japan. Despite this, I find that the Japanese people tend to take better care of their cameras, so paying the extra for shipping hasn't really bothered me. That being said, make sure you know that there are import fees and how much there are before you're buying them, as you might buy one that looks cheaper, but once the import fees are say 40%, it'll be significantly more. Other than my first camera, pretty much all of my other cameras I've purchased have been through eBay uh, from Japan, so as long as you look for the right things, you should be golden. First, check the credibility of the seller. Next to their name, they hopefully have 5 stars or close to it, 4.5, etc, and hundreds or thousands of reviews. Many of the sellers on eBay's are actually brick and mortar stores in Japan that are also selling online, so that's something to be aware of. After the reviews, check out, I would check the condition of the camera and read the description. I don't mind my cameras being a little used, but I try to avoid anything with too many scratches or dings. Pay attention to the description too, you want to make sure the cameras have no fungus in the lenses, as it will impact the final image, and you want to make sure the camera is fully working or tested. Once you find one that looks clean, says tested, has good reviews, then you should be good to pull the trigger. Next, if you don't want to find one online, 
one you could search locally, but I found with medium format cameras, they're much more harder to find local than say online or finding 35 millimeter cameras locally. I found my first camera, the Olympus OM10 locally on Craigslist, but keep in mind that the choices around you physically are gonna be quite limited unless there is a camera store. If there is a local camera store, go see if they have any film cameras, otherwise try your local forums like Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or Facebook groups. People tend to not know much about cameras. I notice outside of Facebook groups on Craigslist and Marketplace, people tend to not know much about film cameras, so it's a lot more easier to haggle with them than say a listing on eBay. Again, you're going to want to make sure the cameras are working and that the person has tested them, otherwise you could try testing them yourselves or buying them, but again, you're playing a risk there. Lastly, more popular online retailers. These tend to come with a more premium price point, but will come with the company's guarantee, any possible protection plans, return labels, etc. A good place to start with this is KEH. While I've never actually bought anything from them, I have a friend who swears by their service. They tend to carry lots of popular medium format cameras and 35mm cameras, lenses, uh, and they're basically just a one-stop shop for all your film needs. You can get your camera, a lens, strap, accessories, etc. all in one purchase. This is granted they have stock. I think with the popularity of film rising, they don't have as much on their online store. I tend to be more of a DIYer, so I don't really foresee myself going this route in the near future, but it is cool knowing that there are more turnkey routes. So I think that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments about cameras or medium format cameras in general. Otherwise, if you guys have any suggestions for what cameras you think I missed, in this buying guide, drop them in the comment down below to help out a fellow film photographer. I also made a 35mm video of this that I uploaded a couple months ago, so if you want to check that out when buying a 35mm camera, definitely check that out. In addition to that, I have a cheap medium format cameras video that came out a year ago and I made a reprise to that, so I have so I have probably 5-10 to 10 cameras where I go more in depth about why you should buy them and why they're affordable in today's market. Always thank you guys so much for watching and until next video, peace out.